Hi guys, Don Rice here, and what we're looking at is the wing of a Don Smith B24. This is the 146 inch version, and just got done shooting the olive drab on the top of the wing. Now, before I shot the olive drab, um, I put a bunch of axle grease on the wing, and along the leading edge, you know, where there might be prop blasts and stuff that would be chipping away at the paint, uh, and also along the CG, which would have been the walkway, um, where they could walk out here. There's a there's a fuel tank here. Um, I know there's usually quite a bit of uh, paint chipping and whatnot around the fuel. Um, my intention is to make this plane look like you know a war dog. Just it's just going to be beat to shit. It's going to be dirty and chipped up and and repaired and um, and so. What I do is, um, this is just, you know, some axle grease or, you know, disc brake grease. And uh, I use one of those, I just cut off a piece of uh, a sponge, one of those natural sponges you get from Home Depot. Use it for painting, I don't know, your bathroom walls or something. And um, I used it and just daubed it along especially along the the uh the panel lines and you know that's usually where you see paint start to chip and certainly wherever there's little hatches and whatnot and i've got little hatches in here you know just dab it along um and you know most people will put a little they'll cause a little damage here and there and that's great um I wanted maximum damage, and so uh, I put lots. I'm looking for something here. Ah, I put lots and lots of uh, grease on here. So this is a piece of double lot steel wool. This is class coat. It's a pretty hard paint. This is uh, wax and uh, wax and grease remover, and I just spray a little bit on there, and then I rub away, and um, ultimately, I will end up steel wooling uh, the whole entire airplane anyway. And um, so, you know, but for the moment, I just want to steel wool where the grease was, is, uh, because what it does is it causes the paint to bubble and uh, the edges of the grease. Um, have some hardened paint um, around them that makes it a little difficult to get the last little bit of grease. Um, and so I use the steel wool to help me break that break that away and get it all. And um, and it also kind of exposes the damage. Now some people might think that's too much. I'm not one of those people. And I don't care what they think. It's not their airplane. Um, next, I'm going to just use a nice clean paper towel with a bit of the wax and grease re remover sprayed on it. You know, yeah, some of that is paint chips and whatnot, but mostly that's, uh, you know, axle grease. <laughs> so. I want to get that off of the plane. And so, I mean, and that is kind of, that's basically the only downside that I know of to this particular method of weathering. Um, is that it puts a lot of grease on your airplane. You've got to get it off in order to uh, ultimately clear coat this thing. Um, but even before that, I'm going to use paint to, uh, I'm going to do paint washes. I'm going to, um, use pastels. I'm going to, which is a powdered, um, uh, uh, solid form of paint in a powdered form. Uh, it's kind of like chalks, and they they have they're like pure pigment. And I'll put that on, and there'll be some airbrushing, and I'm just going to age the hell out of this airplane, and then going to shoot it with clear. And I can't have grease on the airplane, so. Um, 
uh, I will continue, I will wipe this down a couple more times. A brand new clean cloth, wax and grease remover. And I, when I do this, um, for the most part, I will always be rubbing in the direction of the airflow. Um, all of the aging and work that I will be doing uh, on the aging and weathering of this airplane, um, pretty much everything I do, I'll be maintaining this airflow movement of my hands. Because um, it's the only way to make it look real. Anyway, so I think that looks cool. I don't care if you don't like it. Some people like nice, clean, shiny airplanes. I'm not one of those. So that's how you use grease. One of the things I like about this is that if I were to have not done that, and if I wanted to, uh, then first of all, I should not have painted silver on the airplane. Um, because the nice thing about doing this is it exposes that silver undercoating. That's the whole point of painting the silver. Uh, because if I were to then, if I didn't do it this way, the other option is to use some very light sandpaper or a heavier form of um, steel wool and rub until you start to expose that silver. The problem is that you then have rubbed silver paint, which looks a whole lot like gray, which looks a whole lot like primer. And so that's not the look I want. I want silver. I want raw silver showing through. And this is the easiest and as far as I'm concerned the best way to get that effect. And um, so there you go. Later.